you sometimes think that there are so many religious spiritual books even within the vedic context like the gita the shrimad bhagavatam then there is rama and mahabharata the vedas the upanishads the purana the sutra the yantra the mudra so many things so much information there is so much of information overload sometimes but at midst of all this which is what is that which is giving us the highest the crest jewel of all the scriptural knowledge the highest form of spirituality the highest form of realization of god did you ever think sometimes well if you had thought about it or if you keep thinking about it then you are the right place and today we are going to continue with the second shloka from the shrimad bhagavatam yes there are 18000 verses in this divine literature but unfortunately we have covered only the first shloka yet all right so if you have not watched the earlier videos i made around 4 to 5 videos i guess in the first for the first shloka itself so it's there in this playlist please go and watch it all right otherwise you will not understand maybe what's going on here so there you go if you are new to the channel then please uh, like comment share and subscribe the videos and if you want a consultation you can go to the link down below to my website and before i begin as i always say and today because it's on the shrimad bhagavatam and the highest form of spiritual realization so i must say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him all right now the recitation of this shloka is a bit diff called i will try my best <laughs> although i keep quoting this shloka but now i realize i have quoted only half <laughs> the remaining half i don't quote much <laughs> all right so here we go the second shloka from the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam first chapter okay धर्म प्रोजित कैतवत्रो परमो निर्मत्सरा सता वेद्यम वास्तवत्र वस्तु शिवधा तापत्रोन्मूलना श्रीमद्भागवते महामुनीते कि परेश्वर साधियो हृदय अवरुद्य सुसुसुभिक्षणाइट सो हियर इज दि ट्रांसलेशन फॉर this verse completely rejecting all religious activities my god <laughs> completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated comma this bhagavat puran propounds the highest truth bhagavat puran means this shrimad bhagavatam is also referred as the bhagavat puran sometimes this bhagavat puran propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart conditions apply <laughs> fully pure in heart the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all such truth uproots the threefold miseries wow we will see what the threefold miseries are this beautiful bhagavatam compiled by the great sage vyas dev in his maturity is sufficient in itself for god realization what is the need of any other scripture kim va pare as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of the bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge the supreme lord is established within his heart his or her <laughs> all right it's a very interesting translation here the translation says that completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated so basically this refers to the worship of god for material benedictions by people oh god give me this give me that i want this girl i want that boy i want this car i want this job i want that home all material motives the bhagavat puran propounds the highest truth now the condition is that this can only be understood by those devotees who are very pure in heart now the question is 
which is the word that says this because this this is a very prominent condition which this verse has put so we must go to the sanskrit and see which verse uh, in the verse which word says that so the word is nirmatsarana matsara is envy nirmatsara is no envy all right so that means if we want to understand what the shrimad bhagavatam is trying to tell us then it is highly essential that we try to get rid of envy from our heart for anybody otherwise we will not understand this the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all that means shrimad bhagavatam approves the threefold miseries as it said here and it distinguishes the illusion it it uh, it tells us that what god is what spirituality is what light is what wisdom is and what is illusion what is materialistic pleasure what is spiritual pleasure it distinguishes very aptly and of course we know this is compiled by the great sage maharishi vyas who is the son of parashar muni in his maturity highest form of maturity vyasdev wrote this in his highest form of maturity when he was frustrated apparently after writing all the scriptures what is the need of any other scripture it's written here <laughs> as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of the bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge the supreme lord is established within the heart but the question is uh, god is always there right lord krishna says in the gita ishwara sarva bhuta naam hriday se arjuna tishthati that i am situated o son of kunti <laughs> in everybody's heart so why does it say here that the supreme lord is established within his heart i mean anybody who hears this this means that although god is there in our heart the four 400 vishnu form that's uh, unanimously sitting there but we have forgotten him we have told him that we don't want you just get out <laughs> we have no interest in you so we are not interested to hear anything from you or anything about you also so having said that when we start reading the shrimad bhagavatam we become more and more aware of the presence of god that is what happens that's very interesting here so let us start with the purport i don't know this verse will go for how many videos hopefully three videos or more maybe maybe four or five how does it matter so here is the purport purport is the explanation religion includes four primary subjects namely pious activities economic development satisfaction of the senses and finally liberation from material bondage dharma artha kama moksha these four pillars a religious life is a barbarous condition indeed human life begins when religion begins so that means the different the only difference between humans and animals is that humans are supposed to follow some kind of religion which leads them to god ultimately and animals don't follow any religion so if humans are not following religions they, it is said that they are like dvipada pashu which means two legged animals because they are not following anything because then their life is like animals which is written here eating sleeping fearing and mating are the four principles of animal life should i repeat eating sleeping mating defending yes animals will eat they will sleep they will defend themselves and they will have sex four principles of animal life so if there are humans who are only doing these four activities as we see that the people the materialistic society the people sitting there they are very much ever enthusiastic to check in google which is the new restaurant that has opened in their city now why do they do that because there will be some dish which they apparently believe that they have never tasted yes so then they will go and order that dish there they will get some temporary pleasure of the tongue for some 20 30 minutes then that's eating then sleeping 
There are some people who sleep for 12 hours, 14 hours sometimes. And there are some people out of insomnia, they don't sleep at all. <laughs> Eating, sleeping, mating, yes. Having sex with the opposite sex. Or maybe nowadays with the same sex also. Elaborate arrangements are made. Opposite sex is the central point of all the activities of this material world as this is as uh, it is said this material world is Maithuna Agar the place of sexual indulgence and then defending everybody is defending from the morning till night everybody is like okay I need to have a job because then I can feed my belly I can feed my wife then I can keep her yes then I can enjoy with her I can have a good time with her otherwise maybe she will leave me right <laughs> Then you are defending yourself all the time. Anybody comes and touches you, you are like, oh, Why are you? Why are you touching me? Don't touch me. <laughs> what if he has a gun and if he shoots me? Right? That horror is there always. When some stranger comes and approaches us. Or what if he tries to rob me sometimes? Huh? <laughs> so that's defending always. These are common to both animals and to humans. But religion is the extra function of the human being. Without religion, human life is no better than animal life. Therefore, in societies, in human societies, there is some form of religion which aims at self-realization and which makes reference to man's eternal relationship with God. So that's what is the difference between humans and animals in the lower stages of human civilization there is always competition to lord it over the material nature or in other words there is a continuous rivalry to satisfy the senses yes sometimes men are battling over who will marry a girl <laughs> or women are uh, battling sometimes yes who will marry that great person or who will have that perfect job, who will have that award. So it's all a rivalry which is going on and that is to continuously satisfy the senses. Driven by such consciousness, man turns to religion. He thus performs pious activities or religious functions in order to gain something material. But if such material gains are obtainable in other ways, then so-called religion is neglected. This is the situation in modern civilization. Man is thriving economically, so at the present he is not very interested in religion. Churches, mosques or temples are now practically vacant. Men are more interested in factories, shops and cinemas than in religious places, which were erected by their forefathers. This practically proves that religion is performed for some economic gains. Economy gains are needed for sense gratification. Often, one, one, often when one is baffled in the pursuit of sense gratification, he takes to salvation and tries to become one with the Supreme Lord. Consequently, all these states are simply different types of sense gratification. So the word sense gratification means that trying to please our own senses. So that's what is said here. That That's the precarious situation of the human society today that the temples, churches and mosques, they are empty. People are not interested in going there. They are more interested in living like animals and going to waste their time on alcohol parties where they will indulge in illicit sex. Then they will indulge in eating meat, wine, intoxication, all the nonsense and nefarious activities of this world. So by that, they are becoming more and more animalistic. Then there is no difference between a person who is having that kind of a lifestyle and uh, and any other animal. The only difference is Dvipada Pashu. He has two legs and the animal has four legs maybe. <laughs> in the Vedas, the above four activities are prescribed in the regulative way so that there will not be any undue competition for sense gratification. But Srimad Bhagavatam is transcendental to all these sense gratificatory activities. 
Yeah, and before this, I would like to say that uh, the Ved Vedic scriptures also have uh, the Dharma Artha Kama Moksha that you do your Dharma, then you obtain Artha, then you do Kama, which is enjoyment, and then you go for Moksha. But these are also for uh, material prosperity or you know material uh, enjoyment basically. But it is done in a civilized way by paying by paying heed to the authority of God. The authority of God is always always acknowledged in the scriptures. But in the modern society, they are not doing this. Also, they are just behaving like animals, as we can see outside. Or maybe inside also. <laughs> but Srimad Bhagavatam is transcendental to all these sense gratificatory activities. It is purely transcendental literature which can be understood only by the pure devotees of the Lord who are transcendental to competitive sense gratification. In the material world, there is keen competition between animal and animal, man and man, community and community, nation and nation. Yes, every nation wants to become a nuclear power. Such a waste of time. They are wasting millions and billions and trillions of dollars in uh, things like nuclear bombs you know, when they know that nobody will use them, hopefully maybe. <laughs> because if one country uses, then the other country will also use. And every country has some pact or the other signed. Yes, with each other. Like Israel and USA, they are very great friends. Hopefully, apparently, as of now. <laughs> UK is also a friend. Yes, because I am in Germany, there is this NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which was, uh, which was uh, founded once upon a time and still functioning very well to curb the territorial expansion of the USSR, which is currently Russia. But anyways, either ways, Either it's the US or Russia, they just want to be the superpowers. Some superpower they want to be. So that's what is written here that those who have envy and competition cannot understand the Srimad Bhagavatam. But the devotees of the Lord rise above such competitions. They do not compete with the materialist because they are on the path back to Godhead where life is eternal and blissful. Such transcendentalists are non-envious and pure in heart. In the material world, everyone is envious of everyone else and therefore there is competition. But the transcendental devotees of the Lord are not only free from material envy but are well wishers to everyone. And they strive to establish a competition-less society with God in the center. The contemporary socialist's conception of a competition-less society is artificial because in the socialist state, there is competition for the post of a dictator. Five-star statement. <laughs> From the point of view of the Vedas or the point of view of common human activity, sense gratification is the basis of material life. There are three paths mentioned in the Vedas. One involves fruitive activities to gain promotion to better planets. Another involves worshipping different demigods for promotion to the planets of the demigods, like Swarga for example, the heavens. And another involves realizing the absolute truth and his impersonal future, feature and becoming one with him. So basically what is said here that there are many ways we will stop with this and we will do the remaining in the next video. So what is said here that there is this concept of socialism which was prevalent in the 80s and 70s and 90s and still prevalent in many parts of the world which says that oh we will make a society where everybody is you know, kind of equal even the communists have that viewpoint to some extent although there are major differences at least to some extent on uh, between socialism and communism, um, communism, but they have this idea, especially in socialism, that there should be no competition, everybody should be equal. But even then, who will rule? That is the place where there is so much competition. That's what he said here, that the competition for the post of the dictator is there. So the problem with all these ideologies is they seem to be very good. They they are very nice to hear, but 
the problem is they do not know who is the ultimate proprietor of all that exists because lord krishna says in gita bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shanti muruchati bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram sarva loka maheshwaram means he krishna says i am the undisputed emperor of all the worlds that exist suridam sarva bhutanam and the most well wishing friend of everybody gyatva mam shantim ruchati one who knows this and yes bhoktaram yagya tapasyam i am the enjoyer of all the sacrifices all the yagyas so these three things one who understands this is known as the peace formula that person will be peaceful will be happy suridam sarabhutanam gyatva mam shantim ruchati he attains peace because that person will know that nothing is mine so uh nothing can be taken away from me nothing can be mine and not i cannot lose anything in this world because nothing is mine <laughs> so when that spiritual awareness is there then only we can uh, appreciate all the other ideologies which are there in the modern context otherwise everything fails so in the future verses uh in the future purport of this of this verse itself we will see that how shrimad bhagavatam is actually giving us the highest form of spirituality where we get attracted to god himself as a person and not to his resources so these methods at the end which are mentioned there are three paths mentioned in the vedas one is fruitive activities to gain promotions to better planets where we do yagyas and fruitive means the tree has a fruit so there is an expectation that i will get something all right so by that what happens you stay back in this material world but you go to some higher planets like brahma loka sat satya loka or um swarga loka and there are dif- different planetary systems are there yes gyana loka tapa loka mahar loka all these lokas are there this is above the bhuloka so that's there and the other one is we worship different demigods for promotions to the planets of the demigods so sometimes they worship the demigods devatas themselves and they promote us to their planets or the third one is the involves realizing the absolute truth and his impersonal feature and becoming one with him so there is the effulgence from the body of god which is known as brahma jyoti so sometimes people desire that we become uh, formless and the spirit soul goes and merges with the brahman the effulgence which is there but that's not the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to be with god as a person and to directly experience the reciprocation of his personal form all right so that's the beauty of the shrimad bhagavatam that when we read it with non envy nirmatsara naam satam always remember this that when we read this with non envy without the motive of competition without the motive of defeating somebody or without the motive of winning something or without the motive of having any material designations or dispositions in our mind or any materialistic accomplishments in our mind then we purify our hearts by which we obtain spiritual realization and then we get the greatest gift which is not there in any other uh, scripture actually it's there everywhere but the bhagavatam says it directly all right so that's the highest form of spirituality that we obtain god himself rather than his resources because all his resources are temporary one day everything will be finished <laughs> so how that happens this is the introduction to that verse and we will see that later okay so until next time if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation you can go to the link below okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will definitely find him <laughs> once you start reading this okay next time until next time bye bye see you